Good afternoon from Yummy Bee TV. Wishing you all well. Sending plenty of love your way as usual on a lovely hot day. We're not going to get too much of this uh, for much longer. I was I might go live in a minute, but I'll do the video first just in case uh, people prefer that version. And as promised earlier, I'm talking about um, the legendary Scouser called John Hass. Now, there's a lot of mixed feelings when it comes to John Hass. I'll give you my early impressions of him when I first saw him. And the first thing that became apparent was that he wasn't a street man or a road man. He didn't look the kind of geezer that had been brought up in the ghetto, surrounded in the jungle with a whole heap of madness. You lot might know more than me, but he appeared that way to me. Kenny Noy appeared that way to me as well, but you could obviously see straight away that he is a deep, deep thinker and obviously um, used to being in charge of his own ship. Now, it goes, it went a bit like this, really, if the truth be known, we the, the beginning of time now. John Haas, um, it is fair to say, um, is was probably um, Liverpool's public enemy number one at one stage. I found, I never found one Scouser that really liked him and that as far as they was concerned that they wanted him dead, number one dead. I know it's a big thing to say, but that's what I heard before I met him. Now, there's only one figure that we kind of didn't, we kind of sat on the fence a little bit, Curtis Warren. He didn't either say anything bad or good but then Curtis reserves judgments on a lot of things so it might be that him and John were more pallid than probably the rest I can't really answer that um, because I never saw them both together I knew the other one was his nephew Paul Bennett now on hearing all the stories to begin with during my journey during that life and uh, the mixed opinions from him there was a time in strange ways right that um, he allegedly got a prison officer to bring in a gun only to tell security a mate of mine was involved in the deal with it um, unfortunately uh, but he, he, he when he told security about the officer bringing it in and got him nicked basically to score browning points i mean is it a good move or isn't it but it, a bit of familiar uh, familiar behavior there on his part it's fair to say you know what i mean we're not gonna sit on the fence um too much i mean don't mess up your hands please right so we won't sit on the fence but that was that bit so that i've seen that a lot around big names i've got to be honest with you um give up that because the the answer to it will it's not a con it's not this and that and you know i mean playing both sides in some kind of way now the big scandal now with the michael howard thing where he um, so they say, um, 25 kilos, I believe, some guns and ammunition and that kind of stuff. He gets arrested um, for drugs, I think, or robberies. I can't remember, but I know in the early days he might have been an armed robber. Now, he got a big sentence uh, at this stage as well. And he offered to do a deal with Michael Howard where he would return this and that in a garage full of this and that. But nobody on the outside got nicked for what he said or did, if you get what I mean. So Michael Howard got him a pardon uh, with all this scream ups over it. What probably one of the biggest um, scandals of its kind in criminal history. Now, everyone was a damn because one of the things that was meant to have come out of John's mouth, well, allegedly, was that it was for the IRA. Well, when we in the case, um, certain members of the IRA weren't really happy with him either. So all the talk before he reached um, Whitemore Long Larton was that, well, we'll be seeing him, it's on, and da, 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 da. we'll put a hit out on him, um, he's this and he's that, and um, it's happened before. So you hear so many different stories. I just go by what I saw and what I heard by all the names were around me right so that deal was done he got the pardon there was a massive scream up but the other scream up is worth mentioning is that when michael howard had to go i think over that um that thing with john Haas, we only got jack straw in which made the system even more difficult for people like many of us that watch yami b tv so that bit's gonna rankle in some people's minds as well um as that but obviously a big drug um kingpin um running liverpool um, the king on the throne, moving all the pawns around him and, you know, um, flooding the place with real um, bad stuff, really. And st stepping on a lot of people's toes as well. It's got to be said, um, on meeting him, like I said to you, I, you know, I struggled to believe, you know, as much as he was a deep thinker, I 
did it. I struggled to believe that he was a proper gangster. I don't know why. He didn't seem like a killer, but then I used to hear stories about him hitting pe shooting people and with knives, guns and hammers and whatnot. So he's a man who could obviously stick up for his own self, and he proved it with all the rumours going on at that stage in Whitemore, uh, where he was down a seg for a little while, and they were saying, how oh, he ain't going to come up because he knows he's guilty and blah, blah, blah. He knows what's going to happen to him. He turned up, mate. And he didn't look like, um, you know, on the out. It's fair to say that he used to dye his hair. He didn't weren't as good looking in there as he was out there, old John Hass, right? But immediately, as soon as he goes on the wing, which is an all too familiar tale as well, um, many bodies that talk to everyone else, the hitmen, um, other big names from Manchester, not from Liverpool, maybe a couple from London greet him as he comes onto the wing. And he is always going to hear things. Right, people are always going to be quick to tell men like John Hass what's going on behind the scenes. He would have would have trusted lieutenants in all positions, so he would have known what to expect, and he would have been thinking, "What am I going to do if it comes on top for me?" Because you know the, the prison hierarchy not really forgiving um, for supposedly working hand in hand with the authorities, albeit it didn't seem like nobody got nicked, but. Um, all said and done, we often believe that, and it happens around a lot of big names, we've got to be uh, really serious about all this, it happens around a lot of big names where it seems to be one rule for one and one rule for all, like you can do a bit of business, find out what you want, but the, the old adage and the main, the general consensus of what people say is, you can't talk to them without giving something up or giving them something what they want if they know that you're active i get it all get it all i'm not sitting on the fence but i'm not going to be judgmental either but it's something that in later life i don't really agree with if you get what i mean because it seems like smaller people get um, thrown under the bus at the hands of certain people I'm not saying obviously john has did that but they were suggesting things like that too so he turns up in white Mall. Barry Williams was straight in there because obviously he's thinking, well, John, I'm up for sale if there's anything going on, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Barry, <laughs> Barry Williams is a hitman. He's a long ranger and a soldier and a warrior and he'll take on and go from side to side as long as he gets his payment, which was a bit what I was like. But, you know, if I'm told not to go near certain people, I won't by the hierarchy if they say no. Yeah, I me, mean, Tony Argent was famous to saying, well, hold on, he's here now. You lot was all talking that. How come you're not going to do nothing now then? You're all full of shit because you're all talking about it. Why don't you go and do him? something if you believe in this and you believe in that and he's meant to have done this and be that because there's many men from Manchester and Liverpool around at that stage in Whitemore so he's quiet for a week or two and he's quiet most of the time but then he gets you know a bit more secure it's building up his little army around him as well the longer that you're in somewhere and you're a man like that you can get yourself covered from all directions if you get what I mean and he did that and he got by and as far as I remember nobody said or touched him um, in there. There was meant to be a rumour that a big name scouser, beginning with S, walked up to him and said, listen, mate, I think you're wrong and blah, blah, blah. I don't know how true that was. I wasn't there. But many men say that he didn't say nothing to that particular scouser, beginning with S, right? Now, um, further down the line, obviously, um, that sentence there I saw him was uh, for perjury or perverting the course of justice which he got a massive sentence for because obviously the authorities are upset with him because of the Michael Howard situation so they've got him on a small charge basically and can keep him away for as long as they can and that's what they did and I, when I was getting moved around I was down a seg with him in Long Larton and spoke to him through the wall I said John what's the apple mate he goes what can I fucking do yam uh, they're going to fuck about me with me to the end of time they've railroaded me on this trial um, it was all put together neatly as a package by the police and everybody um, to make sure that he gets a kind of indefinite sentence where only the parole board I think he ended up doing treble what the tariff was or even four times it so I'm hearing that he's out now but um, the other bit as well what was I gonna say there's other little scandals as well now I look at the move with Michael Howard handing over the stuff like we are, I'm on record saying that I thought it was uh, a clever move because uh, I tried something similar myself without obviously um, having 
uh, the luxury of having um, guns and ammunition and coke and because remember I'm just a one man crime wave um, but I did lead them on to believe that if you give me bail when I get out I'll promise you this and that but really I didn't really know no one and I didn't have no intentions it was the only time I got bail and as soon as I didn't make the phone call they told everyone I was this and that and they come searching for me and about a week later I was back in custody so it didn't really work out for me but I could see where he was coming from he's getting one over the establishment if that's all it meant for us lot who believed in that shit life back in the day then where's the harm done but it's the other stuff that could have gone on in the background with such really massive um having massive links in high high positions you would have had to have spoken to people in very very high positions so yeah i do believe it was a good con move and he got a means to an end but ultimately he paid for it in the end now there are a lot of speakers that say no i 100% stick with john has yami he was like this and like that um so he looked after a few people as well so there's going to be a bit of love for him but the general consensus was um, being honest you asked me uh that you know there was a lot of people definitely upset with him so it'd be interesting to see how life um goes um with john and that. i don't wish him too much harm if you get what i mean i don't wish nobody no harm but you know what what happens it stays with you forever kind of thing with that life and only they know what they've done and that everybody's got to live with certain skeletons in the closet I'm afraid but um, was it another thing that I needed to clarify from you he, he was a fit man as well into his 50s John Hans used to turn up down the gym as well he used to be tooled up as well so he would he could be the still be the owner of his own ship um, when he's in those places not just out when he's got you know the money and the power to do really what he wants with things but um, I hope I've answered that the best way I can.